Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to check out the Space Gallery at the Museum of Flight near Tacoma, Washington. The door's open. Space Age. Oh. Inside is a full-size space shuttle trainer that was brought to the museum in 2012. This is cool. This is new since I've been here. You actually get to go up and enter the payload bay doors of the space shuttle. Let's go. So you want to be an astronaut? You better be prepared to study. Candidate astronauts get handed a stack of textbooks over three feet high when they first start the program. Electrical, life support, scuba diving, meteorology, wilderness survival, foreign languages, health sciences, life sciences, public speaking. It's quite the curriculum. This module is part of a Russian crew vehicle which was used to transport astronauts to the space station. This section is the descent module, which would separate and return to Earth, holding three occupants. And here's one of the parachutes that was actually used to assist the re-entry of the module on its re-entry in April 2007. Here's a one-to-one -one scale model of the space shuttle's toilet. Here's the type of ejection escape suit worn by the first space shuttle crews. This exhibit tells about the protective tiles that were patterned all over the outside of the space shuttle. You can see them there forming a protective grid to dampen some of the heat upon re-entry. Let's head into the Apollo exhibit, which celebrates America's race to the moon in the 1960s. Here's a manifold from Apollo 12, circa 1969. Up above, here's an engineering model of Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite launched by the Soviet Union. Here's a spacesuit worn by Soviet cosmonauts in the 1960s. Here's an actual descent module which was used by Russia on a space flight in 1992. Speed Conrad spacesuit cover layer from 1963. And here's a collection of Pete. Conrad artifacts, including his flight jacket, a Medal of Honor, and Exceptional Service Medals. Here's a model of the Apollo Lunar Roving Vehicle, which was included in the Apollo 15, 16, and 17 flights to extend the range that astronauts could travel while on the lunar surface. And right in the center here is a sample of lunar material collected by Apollo 12. These are actual Rocketdyne F1 engine components from the Apollo 12 and Apollo 16 missions. And this is interesting, during moonwalks, astronauts would wear checklists like this one that belonged to Pete Conrad, which were strapped to their wrists for reference. And here's a Rockdyne engine that was originally mounted as the first stage for Apollo 16. It says here that this engine suffered a fire during the, during the test of Apollo 16, 
and was replaced and refurbished, put back in as a spare, would have been used on the Apollo 18 and 19 missions if they hadn't been cancelled. This Viking Lander Flight Capsule number 3 was a backup for the first two Viking missions and is the only example of a flight qualified Viking Lander on Earth. Of course, the Viking 1 and Viking 2 became the first US spacecraft to land and send images back from Mars. And here's a diorama of the last astronauts to land on the moon when they arrived on Apollo 17 in 1972. This is the Apollo Command Module from 1965, which housed three astronauts during their three-day journey to the moon and back. Thanks for joining us today and exploring the Space Gallery. This is just one part of the Museum of Flight, and if you want to take in the whole museum, it can take the whole day. Remember to hit subscribe if you want to check out all our latest adventures and check out our interactive map to see all of the other cool places that we've already been to. Until next time, it's time to exit through the gift shop.